man, it's so easy when you look at the prospect of making more money, moving the needle, changing the game, and you're thinking to yourself, well, man. What do I spend money on? Do I do I invest in a website? Do I get a new logo? I mean, what do I spend money on? What's going to move the needle and what's going to really help me? Now, let me say this. What's easy is to spend the money on all the things that you think will help you move the needle. I don't care if you're trying to get to a million dollars or you're trying to add a million dollars. I'm going to give you the long, the short, and all the in-between on exactly not only what do you need to spend money on, but what's going to help you actually make more money, move the needle, and get to the end faster. The reality of this thing is that I know for a fact how easy it is to get lost in. I really want to make sure that I look credible. I want to make sure that I show up well. I want to make sure that I am putting in the things that will help people like me more, bigger, better, stronger. And let me tell you, I've been in business now for 16 flipping years and having lost a lot of money, made a lot of money and uh, learned a ton of lessons. I'm going to tell you this. Nothing moves the needle faster than your story. Nothing helps you attract a client faster than your story. Nothing helps you sell high ticket faster than your story. Whether you're trying to sell something that's $48 or $666, or maybe you're just trying to get an entire congregation to come on a cruise with you to Israel, it doesn't matter. You got to use your story. Stop spending money on things that do not move the needle. I'm going to actually walk you through the top three areas in which I see people and business owners spend money and lose money and waste time. Number one, we spend money on outside imagery. Now, in life, we do this with our homes. We go and buy new couches like we've got problems at home. Things are not OK. And then somehow our answer to that is let's go buy a new pair of shoes. And if it's not that, it's like, OK, let me go buy a couch. Let me buy a car. Let me buy a bracelet. And then at that point, we have arrived. Right. We have taken care of the problem. We've created a solution for ourselves and we have put ourselves in the winning seat. Correct. <laughs> wrong. So wrong. Now, in business, the way this works is that we say, OK, you know what I'm going to do? I need to add some cat. I need to. And then we start walking down this crazy behind road of investing in things like a website, like a logo, like a fancy business cards made out of metal that turn into a bottle opener and a, and a wine opener at the same flipping time. Like, what is that? Like, who's doing this? The truth of the matter is that it really actually, those are the things that you don't want to spend money in out of the gate. Now, I know that there are other people who will disagree and will call bluff on that, but I'm going to say I've been in business for 16 years. I built a seven figure business and my website was barely working. We had business cards, I think at that time that were still ordered from officedepot.com for $26.99 um, and that's $26.99. And we didn't have any brochures. My logo probably cost, I don't know, three, four, five hundred dollars. If that I never hired a branding artist. I didn't do that with my first six figure business, second six figure business, third six figure business or my seven figure bigger business that I eventually sold. So because of this, my experience dictates that I just want to shoot you the skinny because I want you to get to the end and the cash that you have, you need to invest it in. Well, you know what? Hang tight. I'm going to tell you at the end. So number two area where we waste time, we waste time on hype. It's easy for us to see people like especially like at these events or seminars or conferences. And then all oh, we have a whole flipping industry of self-made gurus who have become like self-certified and helping the world. And what's true is that, yes, yes, dear, yes, they have something to offer. But when it comes to really conquering in life or building a business, they've kind of missed a step. And the step is they haven't actually done it themselves. So we spend money on hype. Some people call it the shiny object uh, syndrome kind of thing. I'm not sure that I would call it that at this moment. I think for me, it's more of it's almost like making the purchase or following what looks good intellectually versus following that gut feeling. It's like I know for a fact that most of us, most smart people can smell BS a mile away. And because we can smell BS a mile away, it dictates that not only can we smell BS a, a mile away, but we can smell BS a mile away and we can identify it. But sometimes we choose to ignore it. Now, the hype, we spend money on the hype. We spend money in areas with people or with programs or with products or courses or seminars that are kind of motivational. And motivational is good. 
but motivational is not as exciting as actual process, strategy, how. Anything that you're going to spend money on, the how needs to be laid out for you. And it doesn't have to be laid out for you in micro steps, but it definitely needs to be laid out for you in a way that you can follow. Area number three. So area number three is really simple for me because it dictates that I highlighted it in the beginning. And here's what's true. We spend money on the outside components of our lives. We spend money on the furniture, on the car, on the house. We spend money on the logo, on the colors that we should have on the website and all other things in between. And the truth, the absolute truth of this thing is that we got to spend money on the stuff that's on the inside. Not only is this one of the areas that I know for a fact that, gosh, if I would have just, if I would have just hunkered down and focused on that first, man, instead of getting to 500,000, I know for a fact I would have gotten to 5 million. Instead of getting to a million dollars, I know for a fact that I would have gotten to, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, ten million dollars. I think about it all the time. In the first, maybe I'll, I'll say eight years of my business, the only time I would spend money is on things that hypothetically look like they were on the outside of me. I never invested on my mindset. I never invested in my skills. I never invested in internal things for, you know, that's not true. I guess I did when it came to my team and building a team. I invested in some things, but I look back and I'm like, I could have invested way more in things like training, how to building their confidence, building their mindset. For sure, the outward side matters, but nothing moves the needle than dealing with the things on the inside. So here's where you should spend your money. In your life, everybody should go through some form of a who am I process, whether that is a retreat, whether that's coming to one of our story intensives or our do the damn thing live. I know it's like a selfish plug in, but I'll tell you, having now run 40 events plus around the world in different in the U.S. and outside of the U.S., I look back and I say, man, I can't tell you the amount of people who've written in and tell me, you know what? I thought I was going to your event to learn about this, this, that and the third. But it ended up that I was able to replace me going to therapy. Like, I don't even need to go to therapy anymore. I've been going to therapy for five, six, seven years. My husband and I were on the brink of X and this happened. My child wasn't trying to finish school and that happened. And it's like, man, I look back at that stuff and I'm like, you know, I'm so grateful and honored, but I know the work we do. And my biggest mistake was focusing on all the outside, which is why now in our live events, I focus wholeheartedly on starting at the beginning, the core of the person's story. Why are you even here? Like, what's your purpose? Like, what purpose do you fill in this whole life game? And then what are you supposed to do with it? Like, how do you make an impact on the planet? Work on the inside of you. Spend money on things that move the needle for you spiritually, financially, physically. Spend money on a coach. Spend money on a how. Don't spend money on a website. Spend money on the how. how. Let someone help you figure out the hows, all of the gaps and things that you don't know how to do on improving your skill, making you a better CEO, making you a better manager, someone who hires like, gosh, that is where you want to spend your money. You know, kind of side note for me, after I spend a lot of money, spend a lot of money, spend whatever little money I've ever had and being in business all these years on myself and strengthening me as the CEO of this game, I then need to spend my money on people. People is the first area, especially today in the company that we run. It's easy for me to get caught inside of like processes and systems and all other types of things. And don't get me wrong, that stuff works, but I wholeheartedly believe that the reason why we're able to build, we've been able to build a worldwide movement uh, now is strategically or specifically because I made a decision to invest in people, to invest in people and not just my external customer because my external customer is important. But they're not as important. Oh, I know this is going to be tough for some people. They're not as important as your internal customer. Your internal customer is your employees. They're your team members. They are your team members. There are people who support you. They're your contractors. They're your vendors. Take care of them. Now, when it comes to the customer experience, here's a great example. Right now, we're getting ready to take our clients on a trip. And let's say that I'm bringing my team or people on my team with me. Believe it or not, for the most part, my team members get the same surprise as our clients. Like I literally surprise them the details of the trip. The whole thing is planned and some of it they have to be involved in, right? Because we are a company. But the other part of it is just a gift from me to them because I know how easy it is to get be tired in what we do. Sometimes we have really long hours, crazy weekends. These 
these are part of the value adds that I can't put a dollar amount to, but me taking the time to build out an amazing experience or trip for them that they get to embark on totally changes the game for us because when they come back energized, they know that I'm committed to them. They know and remember that I'm not perfect, but at the end of the day, I'm committed to making it right. I'm committed to doing the right thing. I'm committed to being a really badass CEO or the best of my ability. And more importantly, that I'm playing the long-term game with them. For every person that's within your world, you want to be playing the long-term game. Stop playing these doggone short games. Invest in yourself. And let me tell you this, if you don't invest in yourself, you're playing a short-term game. You're playing a, I'm going to go out a mother effing business game. And if you play a, I'm going to go out a mother effing business game, then everything you love will die in that fire with it. Being in business, fighting for your life, fighting for your dreams and doing the mother effing damn thing is 100 percent about your willingness to invest in you first and invest in you always invest in your team and then invest in your customers. This is literally how you play the long term game and you stay the long term game really, really long. You know, I say it sometimes and I want to say it again. I'm proud of the fact that I've been in business for 16 years. I'm proud of the fact that since opening this company and not having an idea for what it meant to build a a movement out of my own name and my own story and my own life. Like, I really had no idea. Like, I, like, shit, I had no idea. But I tell you this, looking at this whole hardcore, like, no, no joke, I'll tell you the truth. I look back on it and I'm proud of the fact that even though I was sick for seven months, and I mean sick, like I had surgeries and I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks, like I had a really tough 2017 I've never missed a payroll. Doesn't mean that things are always perfect, but I've never missed a payroll. There's no vendor out there right now, at least at this moment, who is hating us because. And it's like, it's because when I started this company, I started playing the long-term game. I did not invest in a website year one. I did not even invest in any marketing material. I bought my Dongon business cards off of OfficeDepot.com. But then after that, I bought it off of, um, I forget, I think you printing or GotPrint.com. And it's funny because I spent maybe 40, 50 bucks on this thing. But gosh, what an absolute game changer. Like I look back at it and I'm like, yes, spend money on the things that are on the inside that people can't see. Those are the things that move the needle the fastest. Do not spend money on visual items before you spend money on you, your team and your customers. Now, right after that, let me add this bonus moment. You want to spend money on systems. So right after people, the number two area that I spent some money on was systems. And for me, the absolute place that I needed to spend money on first was inside of how we were gathering people's information, their phone number, their email, and because I was speaking a lot. So after speaking a lot, I needed to make sure I had a really solid place to store this information and then be able to nurture them. Because if I can nurture them, if I can take those people and then nurture them over a period of time, then man, like I put myself in the seat where I'm able to do more with less. I don't have to hire a customer service rep to then go behind me and talk to those people or nurture those people or say, hey, we didn't talk to you or whatever, whatever it might be. I absolutely did that. And for me, my very first item was Infusionsoft. Like that was the very first tool. Now, before that time, I had never heard of Infusionsoft, but make no mistake about it. Infusionsoft walked in through the door and it changed a mother everything game it did because i could take all this stuff i was doing stick it into stick all of our contacts if you will inside of a place and start to nurture them but i'll tell you this i didn't just move with infusionsoft alone i want to be clear number two area that i spent my time money energy and effort was in buying stages so i bought so this is marketing okay and the second area was marketing and this is me getting myself in more places where i could go and tell my story share my story give my story story, deliver my story, have people physically, emotionally, and tangibly and be inside of my story. Because if I could do that, then I could build relationships that I could come back a year from then, two years from then. Again, that's playing the long-term game. Two years from then, and I could really move the needle quickly. With that, I want to highlight that after I invested hundreds and then thousands of dollars in marketing, just pure marketing, then what happened is that I put myself in a place in which I was like, okay, great. I have now next... Uh, the next level of this and the next level of this is an I invested in an offline place to take our offline conversations and plug them into our world. And that was with pipe drive. So pipe drive for me was like a safe haven, uh, maybe 10. Gosh, let's see, maybe 12 years ago. I, well, wait, hold on. It's not 10 years ago. It must be. This is 2012. I'm here talking like it's 2027. Let's re- rewind 
Okay, so 2012, 13, Salesforce was like hype city. Everybody and their mama was like, I got to have Salesforce. Salesforce is going to save the day. If I install Salesforce, it's going to be everything. And we're going to be quadrillionaires. And I was like, you know what? At that time, we had about maybe eight sales guys who were out in the field with me. And we have three offices. I mean, we're managing many, many counties. I'm getting ready to buy out my competitor. Actually, I had just bought out a company in Greensboro, one of my competitors. And in that, I said to myself, okay, I'm going to take on this thought that possibly Salesforce is everything and then some. But what I'm going to do is I'll take, I'll hear everybody's hype, but then I need to entertain another player in the game because Salesforce was like thousands of dollars for us at least. It was over a grand, I know. And I was like, okay, let's do a face-off. So I literally find, I stumble upon this software called Pipedrive. And at the time they were new and up and coming. And I'm like, I love how sexy their interface is. I love everything about them. Let's do a face-off. I mean, flipping name, this thing is nine bucks, <laughs> nine bucks a month versus like a thousand plus dollars. Like you didn't even have to tell my butt twice. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, let's do a face-off for two, three weeks. We do this face-off and lo and behold, flipping Pipedrive wins. Pipedrive saves the day nine bucks per person and we are off to the races and now we're managing and even to be quite honest with you I don't want you to think we brought in pipe drive and then we use it as a level 10 because everybody knows that when you get a new software the truth is that you don't use all the features you don't we claim we do but we really don't we don't so I would say we maybe use it at a level three out of the 10 but shit that thing changed the game like man like we were like we were so put together like we we knew what was happening we knew what deals we had we knew what didn't close what should close what our pipeline was and it was the first time that I really felt like I had a strong handle on our company in terms of being proactive and forecasting our revenue I've never turned back. I've never not trusted it. And even though we've entertained other softwares at this point, Pipedrive is still winning. Hashtag winning. I'll say this. When you think about what to invest in and where to spend your money, I'm going to tell you first you. If you're not a strong CEO, spend money there. If you're not a badass when it comes to sales and marketing, go there. If you don't have a map to help you get to a million dollars or add a million dollars, then start there. Like whatever one of those three are. And if you don't know who and where to go to, come head to tiffanylargy.com backslash apply and come hang out with us. Uh, there's a reason why people travel from all over the world to come and hang out with us. And it's not because we're perfect, not by a long shot but it's definitely because we're committed and we create results. And more importantly, we have proven process that's outside of just being a good coach. It's having ran brick and mortar businesses and understanding different service-based businesses at different levels, regardless of where they are. The next thing of this is then people don't shy away from investing in people, especially if they're taking care of you. You cannot, this is not a you thing. You will not get to the top. I don't care if you're already doing a million or five million or 20 million. I don't care if you haven't started your business yet and you're listening to this don't try to do it alone and don't try to be at the top alone is it like literally the top is lonely and it sucks if there's no one with you and then third i would say take time to i didn't mention this before but i'm going to mention this now outside of your customer experience and investing in making your customer experience better and when i say invest that might mean that you're spending money on mailing them something that might mean that you're spending money on having extra popcorn at your event well, you know what? Don't don't do extra popcorn because popcorn's kind of cheap. Let's do extra popcorn with like butter and flavoring and then everybody gets a beer. You know what I mean? Like, let's just do something that's legit. Or if you're coming to our event, everybody has a bottle of wine and then like two shots of whiskey. It's a whole nother conversation. But what's real is that you want to invest in people and let them know that you love them and you care about them. Because if you don't, they will leave you. And then you have no one to blame but yourself because you spend all that time trying to spend money on stuff that don't matter and things that won't help you move the needle and things that won't make you more money. Man, have I told you how glad I am that you're here? Like, real talk. Have I flipping told you how glad I am that you are here? You have listened. This is the part of the show where I say, go follow us. Go find us. Go follow us. Go stalk us. But just make sure that we're connected. Head to do the damn thing TV, do the damn thing life, or just go hang out on TiffanyLargy.com. If we are not friends on Facebook, if you have not liked our Instagram page, go do that because you're going to want to see what we're doing, how we're doing, and how we're doing the damn thing daily. <laughs>